So what is OSINT? Well, it's gathering public data and converting into intelligence. It's a process to define target, gather information, analyze that information, and then verify. Obviously, we do all of this in ethical and legal realm of our jurisdiction, only use authorized target and follow laws. OSINT framework, what is that? That is a map of free OSINT resources. It's available freely on the internet, and we will go through that in our exercise. This is really a starting point for your uh, penetration testing for any of the exercises that you might be doing. We'll also do tools overview. We'll look at the harvester, we'll look at Shodan, we'll look at Maltego. Uh, we, we have divided these topics into different modules as you will follow through rest of the presentation. What are the tools that I recommend that you start with? Well, first of all, have a, a laptop or a system that is connected to internet with basic command line, and you're good to go. You don't need sophisticated laptops or sophisticated systems to run these exercises. You will see these are all based on command line interfaces or web browser interfaces and web browser searches that you can easily do from any computer. Now, in this case, you if you want to install uh, the harvester, that's your, our first tool, uh, you can easily do it from your Windows, uh, from the GitHub, for, for Mac, from um, the Brew, so Brew in, would install uh, the harvester for you, or through Linux, you can run different commands to install Linux as well. We will show you an example of Mac, how to do that. And then you can follow that for your system as well. OSINT is sometimes called the art of finding needles in the haystack. By cleverly curing public data, you can uncover a treasure trove of information. Although, as I said earlier, we must remain ethical and legal, only targeting publicly accessible information or assets we have permission to assess. A lot of penetration testers, they actually start at OSIND framework as well. So keep that in mind. You can, when you have been asked to do penetration testing, the first place that you can start with is OSIND framework. And you will find that there is a lot of open source and free tools that you can use to do that. We will look at some of those in the next module. Let's move on. In this module one, we have a quick exercise that we want you to, to follow. Now, there are three steps here. One, we will look at OSIND framework. So we will go to a browser and navigate to osindframework.com. Second, we will look at Google Docking example, where we'll perform a simple search that would allow us to discover some data that you would usually not be able to find in normal Google searches. And finally, the third step of this exercise will be analysis, where we'll point out what we have found, we'll see uh, how we can use that information to do our reconnaissance. Okay, so let's start. First, let's open a browser and follow me here. I will give you an example here. Look at this browser and go to osindframework.com. Now in this, as you see, as soon as you go to this link, you find the whole framework and various different categories within that framework. You can click on any of these categories and go to subcategories. That would allow you to look for specific information about a user, about a company, about 
some public records, about business records, about transportation, about tools, about training. So there's endless possibilities here, really. So click on any one of those links. Like, let's say if you click on email addresses, it further opens email searches, common email format, email verification, breach data, mail, blacklist. So you can click on any one of these. If I click on breach data, I can go to have I been pumped. So have I been pumped is a really useful website that can tell you if your email address has been part of a, a data page or a hack. So you can use uh, to this to check any of your email addresses. Well, it's a good thing to do check on your email addresses. And also, you know, it's one of those things that you can do for your customers or your clients as well. This tells us a lot of good information and it gives a lot of good detail. For example, if I type in my own email address, it tells me good news, no pawnage found. So that's really good. In this case, you can do that as well. So see, you see how we started from OSINT framework. We looked at email, we brought into the data breach details, and we went into how I've been found um, to go and look at the email address, um, yeah, to do search on the email address that we have. In this case, my email ID, my email address is secure. It has not been um, in a part of a data breach. It has not been a part of a data security incident. Uh, so that's all good. So the next example is Google Darking. Google Darking is nothing but going and finding information that might not be pu publicly available from Google, but putting it in a way that it might present you that information. This again, that's really good and underused a tool to do uh, reconnaissance um, and passive reconnaissance. It's really good uh, to use this as a tool as well. I'm going to go into google.com. And I'm going to type in uh, a site, github.com. And then in quotes, I will type in password. Now this gives me a quick search of the word password in github.com website. Now normally you will not get this through just doing a search, a normal search of github.com or a normal search of password. But in, in this case, combining both of these um, different things, different items together, we are able to see if there is something related with the password um, on github.com. Now, I clicked on one of those links, second last from my uh, overall list. I don't know where you would find this in your list, but in my list, I did find one that did have a mention of one of the password free text password in one of the files. So yeah, keep in mind that it could give you some information, public information that you would not get usually using this technique. So Google docking is a really useful technique as well uh, to, to do within this exercise. Now let's do an analysis of what we did till now. now we started with OSINT framework. We went to OSINTframework.com. We did a basic search of, um, you know, of email, of finding the data breach of, a, of an email. So we looked at our own emails. Is there a data breach around that? It quickly told us, in my case, there was no data breach around this. 
The second thing we did was we went to Google Docking. So we looked at some password information on github.com. You can use any of the domains as long as you have the authority and authorization and um, you know it is within the legal limits you can go and search for that data uh, and search for that domain within that domain for that specific type of data but please as i said before it has to be within your uh, legal and lawful requirements please do not do anything which is not uh, allowed legally within your jurisdiction. Now, as we move on, so let's recap at what we can do from OSI and framework. One thing is you can go and look for different type of categories and then subcategories, and then look at different free so uh, tools, open source tools, and if you go start going through all those tools you can understand you can discover many interesting details about an entity about a, a data subject about a person about a company so it's very inf useful and informational for people within an organization or people like penetration testers or other cybersecurity professionals who want to do some quick understanding of an entity before doing a detailed scan. It's also called passive recon, where you are just using the publicly available information. You are not trying to penetrate a target. You are just using publicly available information um, to just gather intelligence of a system, of an organization, or of a person. Now, if you look at this slide, there are some key things that we can uh, you know, go through. First of all, you can use search engines, or you can use Google Docking to develop some sort of initial understanding of an entity. Then. You can also go to social media. In this day and age, there's a lot of publicly available information more than needed in, uh, given already by people on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on Facebook. So this can be in another interesting area to gather information from. A lot of people share more than required information over the internet. So I would advise you not to do it, but obviously, if you are trying to legally gather information on an entity, on a person, on a, on a company, then yes, you would need to go on to social media to find any related information. The other thing that you can do is image and video analysis. You can use Google, reverse Google uh, searches, image searches, you can use Tin Eye, you can use Yandex, there are also metadata extraction tools that we will look at during the labs as well, like EXIF tool. Uh, there is things related to GPS softwares that can give you a lot of uh, analysis of the video and image as well. The third thing that you can use over here would be, my apologies, the fourth thing that you can use over here is geospatial intelligence, geoint. Using Google Earth, Bing Maps or other open satellite data, you can also pinpoint a location uh, and you can do location-based investigation. Matching landmarks also is one way where you can look at landmarks. For example, in case of London, I live in London. If there is a picture and it has uh, London's uh, uh, you know, Big Ben or Houses of Parliament, then it's really easy to understand this is an event or a picture of uh, something happening in London, in city of London, right? So similarly, you can go through these, uh, you know, landmark mapping, landmark checking, um, uh, you know, uh, information as well. Then the final piece to put together is data correlation and verification. 
you will you can use cross reference multiple sources to confirm the authenticity of of the information that's been provided so it's always good to check various multiple uh, sources rather than just depend on one source uh, to base all of your uh, you know work on that so i have i hope that it has been useful and uh, you know the, you've been um, getting some useful information out of this 